Hello everyone, I'm Richard Fredrickson, and yes, you are watching Profiles here on Channel 6, and a special guest today. It has taken me three months, two weeks, two days, 14 hours and 38 minutes to finally, <laughs> finally get our county executive. Yes, she's so busy. I thank you. Thank you very way, much for having me. I appreciate it. Coming in this morning. Uh, you'll probably see us on uh, Monday morning uh, as we get everything all set up for you. I'm going to do a little background. Okay. I think, because uh, I always wonder and ask this question, but I'm not going to ask it yet. Okay. And why? Why do you do this stuff? I've asked every elected official forever, why? And just hold on to that okay. answer. So tell me a little bit about all this education that you've been <laughs> through, because you've got more degrees than a thermometer, and... You have one of the toughest jobs, I think, in the world, and that is that as a teacher. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little background on that, a little history. Right, well, yes, um, I, I love being able to tell people that I, I am an educator. I still, you know, in my heart of hearts feel that I am an, an educator. Um, I went to Illinois State University and graduated actually with a criminal justice degree. And my um, desire was to go into counseling. And I did a little stint at the old IYC Joliet at that time. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, five uh, clients, as they called them there. And, you know, it was during that time that I realized, you know, we could be doing a lot more with our youth and that um, in order to stop them from being in there, we need to grab them when they are in school and young. And so I shifted gears and I went back and I got a teaching certificate um, and was uh, very proud of uh, the, the work I did in uh, focusing on at-risk students. Um, it, it trickled in as a teacher and as a school administrator, and then when I became the regional superintendent, uh, we had the at-risk school, Lincoln School, and that was for our at-risk students, and um, I think we did a pretty good job at um, taking the kids who were sent there by our local schools and having a full wraparound service for them. Uh, because again, we know we only have students for five, six hours a day. Uh, they have to go home, and so it's our responsibility to help them find different anchors yeah. to turn to. And that included some computer systems that you were teaching it, these kids too, which was did. unique. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, yeah. yes, it was all, it was, it was a different environment than their school, because a lot of these kids, they're, they're bright kids, and they just don't fit into the mold of, you know, the structure of the school and so they worked independently they had you know they had some outlet they had some services they had counseling and um, yeah I was very proud of the success rate there because you know when we left we had about you know, like a high 90% attendance rate which was really impressive since most of these kids a lot of their issues were not going to school yeah, right now for you who listened to the opening little kind of monologue I did there I know that education is not the word okay <laughs> <laughs> and a little history behind that mm -hmm. is that, and I won't mention his name, but a former school superintendent <laughs> used that on me about 20 years ago. Okay. <laughs> oh, I've always thought, if I interview someone with a history of education, I've got to use it. So I like it. There like you go. <laughs> uh, briefly, a little bit about the family. Okay. Um, I'm born and raised here in Joliet, Will County. I'm fourth generation Will County resident. Uh, great grandparents, grandparents, my parents, myself. Uh, my, I have uh, six siblings, and we're all pretty much in in the area here. I have one that's in the DuPage and one that's out in California, uh, but there's uh, five of us here who is still in the the Will County region. Uh, my father had a service station for 60 years on Plainfield Road. My mother was a, a teacher as, as well. Okay. Um, I have two wonderful kids, one at Lewis University and one a junior at uh, Joliet West. And um, we are building, they are also building their roots here in, in Will County. You know, I, people talk about leaving uh, the area, leaving the state, that's just something that's not in my DNA. I, I like being part of the Will County community. I think we are, impressive when we look at at the state as a whole just the services the um, the camaraderie the people who know each other we're always six degrees of separation from one another and um, I've been uh, very proud to be a resident here you know you um, as you uh, started what was it 20 let's see you were a state senator mm -hmm. in 2012 right. all right so let me back up there okay. what prompted that what was the motivation to really get really involved in politics. Why? 
Um, well, I guess it starts back when I first ran for regional superintendent. My, my good friend, Glenn Markham, he worked for my father. Uh, he was involved in local politics, and um, it was the regional superintendent is a unique elected position because you need specific qualifications. There's two positions you need qualification at that time. It was the regional superintendent and the, um, and the uh, state attorney. We have now in included the sheriff to have specific qualifications. Prior to that, you didn't need to, have, you didn't need to be a police officer. You do now. Um, so he had asked me to, to run. I was at home for, I, I had stepped away from my principalship to stay home with my second child. And he said, are you interested in doing this? Um, it was kind of like, we need, we need a body there. And so I said, sure. Um, and lo and behold, I, I won. It was an exciting six years. I loved being the, I, I always said I was kind of the cheer, the position actually is a conduit between the state board and the school districts, but for me, I, I felt like I was able to be a cheerleader for our school districts because so many of these schools are doing great things for our student. That was my role to, to showcase that. Um, so from there, um, you know, you start to get involved in politics because there's education issues and you get calls, you know, they're trying to pass this bill, they want to do this. Um, you know, can you call your, your legislators? You need to, you know, speak out. And so that was really my first um, you know, step into big politics, I'll say, because you, you, we needed a voice. So um, in 2012, they had redistrict, much like we're doing now, and there was an open seat. I had a conversation with um, Senator, then Senator A.J. Wilhelmy, uh, then County Executive Larry Walsh, about uh, running for that position. And so uh, it was the right time. Um, I had the, the, the background in education that I felt like would be a, a, a good uh, trademark for me to run. And I was successful in 2012. And you were yeah. successful. Yes. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a name there that mm -hmm. uh, as you became uh, leaping ahead a bit mm -hmm. after the uh, your Senate experiences, um, Larry Walsh and then uh, Denise Winfrey was the mm -hmm. interim mm -hmm. there. Uh, how did that how did that come about? Um, running for county executive? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I had conversations. Well, I was in my second term. I was going to have to make a decision uh, whether or not I was going to run again. Um, I was um, approached by a few people, um, for, you know, prior to even, uh, when, when Larry was running, it was never, you know, it was right. kind of a long-term conversation. Uh, you know, will you come back and run for county executive? And, you know, you have party people, you have people in labor, you have pe friends outside at different legislative positions who, you know, who talk about it. Um, it was never my intent, you know. Larry, Larry was, Larry was the county executive, and he was going to be the county executive until he decided not to. And then in August, when he decided not to, uh, some more phone calls came in, and um, people knew I was. Uh, I, I enjoy politics. I, I feel like I do a good job, but um, I, I wanted to come back home and do this, and so it was an opportunity uh, for me to do what I enjoy doing. I felt like I was good with policy making. Um, I just wanted to do it closer to home. Good. How's that working out for you? It's working out well. <laughs> <laughs> it's working out well. I, I you know, uh, this is a, these are one of these positions you can't, you don't know until you're in the position, just like state senator. You know, you, you have an idea of what people do, but um, until you're actually in, um, in the position, you, you really get a flavor of, of what goes on. And Will County is in, a, a, is in a very good position. We're very fortunate here. Even during the last few you know, months of the years of COVID, we didn't struggle as much as other um, COVID. And that's, you know, that's a credit to Larry and, and the county board. Yeah, and Will County is in the entire nation uh, the fastest growing county and continues to be uh, through the United States, not just in the state of Illinois, but everywhere so there's so many different areas that we could talk about oh, and yes, be proud sure, of yes mm -hmm. and, and the pride of, of uh, will county uh, there's so much going on in will county that it would take another show probably to yes. do the entire hour of all that development i'm i'm going to have uh, uh, doug Pryor from the will county center of economic development who is now the the, the i think that title is president yep. um, He'll be on here shortly as well, so we can continue with that story. Uh, but when you became, uh, well, let's do this. Let's do a little lesson for the, okay. for the audience. As the, what does the position of executive, what are some of the responsibilities, what are some of the authorities that you have? 
Um, as, as people have probably learned, paying attention a little bit more, the county executive is a very unique position in, in government in Illinois. Up till four years ago, we were the only county that had this form of government. Champaign County four years ago, also uh, by referendum elected to have this form of government. And it's, it's a two part, it's a, it's a two, um, two branch system, I should say actually three. Um, because we have the, we have our judicial, obviously, we have our legislative body, which is the county board, and then we have the executive position. And so it's a, it's a checks and balance, much like we have at the state level. Uh, the county board votes on uh, the budget and policy. The county executive executes those. Uh, so economic development, day-to-day -day operation, providing a budget is all the responsibility of, of the county executive. Uh, we are much like the governor does, we are enacting the policy that the county board establishes. Okay. I'm going to go back six and a half paragraphs. Okay. So I just thought of something. Okay. And I'm going to help you out. Okay. So you're not going to get in trouble. All right. We need the names of your children. Oh, okay. Who are watching this they and saying, are. wait a minute. <laughs> my mom did say my name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elise. Is, uh, is my daughter and Zachary is my son. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? Okay. <laughs> Proudest moments so far, so far in this position? Um, I would have to say um, the COVID rollout. You know, it was one of these situations we walked into. Um, obviously, uh, COVID, you know, the situation with, with COVID threw everyone kind of in a, in a, in a jumble. When I took office, it was December 7th, the vaccine arrived, I believe, December 14th. And um, we realized quickly that there was no real plan to get that out. And so um, I'm fortunate, uh, we, EMA, the health department, the county board and my office, we worked together um, to get a plan quickly quickly put together in order to get those vaccines in people's arm. And um, I'm very, grateful for my chief of staff and the people behind the scenes in the Will County Executive's Office because uh, we, we pretty much had to run it like a campaign, like an election campaign, because yeah. you need to get information out. You need to tell people who, what, where, when, and, and, and why. And so um, we were able to get money. The, co the county board came through with the funding. Uh, we were able to put together a call center, um, a big marketing campaign. Um, we we're able to connect with numerous people throughout the community. We've heard about our Joliet firefighters who provided numerous, numerous volunteer hours to set up that clinic. And um, for the first six months, it was everything was focused on making sure that we were able to provide uh, vaccines for the people who, who chose to get them. And um, it was a pretty overwhelming Task. I remember, that, and I think we forget already how you know how it was yeah. so emotional for people when that those vaccines came out. Because I remember sitting there and people, you know, folks rolling in their their parents to get you know uh, bringing in their parents uh, to get the vaccinated people walk. You know, they were so desperate to get this vaccine, and it was very, very emotional time. And so I, I am proud of how we all came together. Uh, we have a lot of great people here in the county. And um, not only in government, but this was a community effort. We can point to hundreds of people who helped with this. And I think as a, as a county as a whole, we should be really proud. And we're about at 65, almost 66% of people fully vaccinated. And uh, that's, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's, it is. it's very mm -hmm. impressive. And uh, kudos, I mean, the fire department yeah. and many others. Mm -hmm. But right. uh, I will tell you that uh, my wife and I got our shots at the Will County Health, uh, what is that, Raul, down there? Mm -hmm. I mean, people were great, yeah. absolutely fantastic. And it was yeah. the way they moved people through, the courtesy, and it's just great. So congratulations yeah. to you, because if it didn't go well, yeah, it would be right. something else. I know, yeah. I agree. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of that yeah. kind of territory that mm -hmm. will travel through, okay. uh, undoubtedly now mm -hmm. you have some goals. Mm -hmm. Some have been accomplished, I would imagine. Others are still out there. So. It's just you and I here. Yeah. You could share some of those goals with me, yeah. if you'd like. Yeah, no, that that'd be great. You know, you know, we've we've repeatedly had this message that there's a lot going on here in Will County, and so we could, you know, on any given day, our, you know, our. 
traction can be turned right, right or left. But there are some consistent things that we know have to be um, addressed in, in the county as, as a whole. For me personally, uh, one of my priorities is always to be a, uh, someone who is out in the community, a reliable. If you, you contact our office, I want to make sure that there is some feedback. You may not always agree with the outcome, but it's always a priority that um, people in the community have a voice and can be heard and we can respond to them. So my staff knows um, that it, that is number one for me, uh, customer service. Um, but in regards to what we need to do in the, in, in the county, obviously transportation infrastructure, doesn't, it, it never goes away and it's not going to go away. Um, my, my deputy chief has set up uh, meetings throughout the regions to talk to uh, mayors and their, their planning. Uh, their planning staff as well as their um, village administrators and we're starting to talk about uh, transportation as, as a whole. We've done a lot of studies. We need to now put those studies in, into action and have a plan. Um, you know there's a lot of focus on Joliet and the truck traffic but you know when you sit down at these meetings municipalities, villages, cities all over the county are having these conversations sure. And um, we, we have studies about creating a, you know, a truck route. We just need now to take it to the next step, step and enact those, those plans because that's really important. And a lot of that just not, doesn't have just to do with truck. It has to do with the technology, too. Uh, because, again, you know, so many of us now use our, our GPSs to, um, to tell us where to go, and truck drivers are, are no different. So we have to make sure that the technology is, you know, Co co coinciding with, with the patterns that we are encouraging yeah. our trucks to, to take. Because GPS can also misdirect you in mm -hmm. areas as well. Yeah. That same voice is everywhere. Yes. She's, her she voice is. is everywhere. She is. You know. She is. The, um, mm -hmm. uh, I think five paragraphs ago when I mentioned that you were a state senator, we just kind of... You were in there and you were elected, <laughs> you got campaign and so forth. Highs and lows as a state senator, because you um, have some experiences yes, to share. We, we do, yeah. You know, being a state senator was a, is a, was a humbling experience, you know, to be able to walk into the Capitol and say, you know, that was your office was, was very overwhelming. Um, you know, for me, probably a little too, too political, you know, you know, and which is a lot of the show. I mean, that's a lot of show. I'm going to tell you right now that I feel very fortunate that I was able to pass a lot of legislation in a bipartisan uh, fashion. I, I, truthfully, I can't think of anything that I didn't have a bipartisan collaboration on. Um, obviously, my uh, forte was education, uh, but I spent a lot of time on veteran issues. Um, we were able to set up a, uh, a veterans entrepreneur ship program um, that was the help of local veterans too pushing for something it took a long time i think it took five years but we were able to to create this program that helps uh, our veterans who want to start a business small business uh, get some um, uh, capital and, and use the state as collateral to get their their loans um, i spent a lot of time on senior issues as well uh, but probably uh, my my proudest moment was my 911 bill i, I um, it was one of my first or second year, and it, it stemmed from a situation in, in Texas, actually, when an estranged mother and her daughter were hiding uh, from an a, a, a abusive father and spouse, and he found her, and um, he came to the hotel, and the young girl was trying to dial 911, and she could not get out because he recorded at that time the prefix, that 9911. Oh. And so Illinois was the first, um, was the first state to take that out. So when someone dials 911 directly, it has to go to a call center. So we started that in Illinois, and um, it's now a, a nationwide um, uh, law that President Trump signed it yeah. as well. So yeah. that, that was probably one of my uh, most emotional moments. I was able to meet the grandfather who has made a crusade to pass this bill. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it's, those are the good things that you can do sure. that people don't realize. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're simple. It was a simple fix, you know. Well, I would say yeah. that if, if I asked you right mm -hmm. now, when was 911 without the prefix? And you wouldn't know <laughs> because it just happened. You know, sometimes people just take for granted, well, oh, it's been around forever. Yeah. No, it has not. Yeah. Not even one 911 hasn't yeah. been around forever. Uh, amazing. Yeah. And congratulations on that. So here's a question I know that I asked you whenever our last meeting was. And 
it's one that these reporters always ask you, and the paper asks you, and the patch, and all these different people, and I have to do it. I just have to do okay. it. So what's going to happen right. to the old courthouse? Ah, I gotcha. Ah, yes. <laughs> um, obviously, that has, um, it, it's highlighted lately. Um, we, there is a, there is a resolution that the county board passed prior to me getting here, I believe it was in 2019, that um, said that it would be demolished. Um, since then, there has been a renewed interest. However, the county board has not changed that resolution. So we as a, you know, it's my responsibility to start preparing a plan for that. So right. there is a plan. There are some um, some things we have to figure out first. Obviously, there's cost. Um, there's a substation underneath it, Comet substation. We have to relocate that, um, a as well as you know, there is a, uh, a decree out there that says we can only use it for public use. And so there, that is right now with the county board is pretty much debating whether or not we are able to sell it to a private entity to do what some of the community members want. I believe, you know, it's going to probably take about a, a year simply because of the substation underneath. We have to, you know, there's um, some asbestos in there. We have to take care of um, to make sure when it does come down that it's done safely. So I imagine in that time that there will be some community interest and some push to keep the courthouse. But as of now, um, the instructions has been to demolish it. Is there a way that this group who wants to have, you know, businesses and you know, other things in that courthouse to change that law? Or that, is it a regulation or a law? It, it's a decree, they call it. Okay. So, yeah. And I, I don't, I don't know the legality of that to say yes or no if they okay. would be able to do it. We're just acting upon what the information the state's attorney gives us at this time. Okay. Yeah. All right. mm -hmm. Well, a lot of things going to be uh, happening downtown Juliet. Yeah. Um, the engineering on Chicago Street happening now. Uh, you see the fiber being put in and all kinds of construction going on, including uh, automating our bridges. Uh, is there anything that comes to mind that you want to share that I have forgotten that I don't have written down here on my... In downtown Joliet? No, no all of no. Joliet. Downtown, oh, yeah. yeah, definitely downtown, but throughout. I mean, there's the Hobart Road thing that's going on, yeah, Hollywood, the, yeah. Hobart Road, the bridge across the display. I mean, as I said, if I open up that box, oh, yeah, we, we're uh, here for another hour. Yeah, you're right. We have a lot of... Um, we have a lot of development, and you're going to have a great conversation with Doug. And I don't want to, I don't want to steal some of his his thunder there. But yeah, you know, I always say Will County is one of those places that we don't have to really do a lot of uh, reaching out because they come they come to us. Uh, we are, you know, we're in the hub of a transportation system. We have all the type of transportation systems you can. Uh, we have colleges here. We have we have wonderful forest preserves, and we have activity. So we're very fortunate that we have a lot of people have a lot of interest in in Will County. And I always say for Illinois, um, I always tease the governor. It's like you know to pay to pay attention. We're your playbook for the rest of the state because we do it right. And again, I, I always credit that to, for the most part, a lot of the relationships. We are a for the Will County. We are a relationship type of a county and we get things done because we want to work with one another. You know when I came to uh, Will County back in the 70s I always thought it was kind of the county that Springfield forgot about. Mm -hmm. Everything was Chicago mm -hmm. and other counties and it just seemed like you know the I-55 was built with not enough lanes and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole lot more focus and attention and things happening in Will County. Right. And right. Be, I, yeah. I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. And the I-80 bridge is, you know, that, that like you said, that could be a, a whole uh, oh, yes. a whole episode too. I mean, it's it's going it's a long time coming. That's that's the only that's the only problem with these projects is they're not quick enough. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's a matter of money too and funding for True. these things. Um, want to take just a moment out because she's been a friend of, of Channel 6 and our producer Dick Schuster to, uh, well, I'll let you do this. Okay. What's happening with Anastasia, yeah. uh, who has been at uh, Tusky, I believe is her yeah. last name, right? Mm -hmm. what, how many years has she been in uh, that position? Twelve years she served years. in this position, yeah. Yeah, yeah so Anastasia, um, a few weeks ago, came to me and said, um, 
I have an opportunity to be a director over at UCP. I feel like I could do a lot of good there. I can take my experience here and um, uh, do some, you know, re re revitalize what's going on in UCP. Yeah. And you know, for me as an individual, we, we Anastasia is a people person. You know, to, to know Anastasia is to, to love her. She has a lot of contact. She's always very, she always says she kills people with kindness. Yeah. She sure does. Yes. She sure does. She is going to be a, a big miss for us here. Uh, UCP and Mike Hennessy are very lucky to have her. Um, you know, but you can't pass up opportunities. No. And I think I, I think anyone who knows me knows, like, I, I recognize that there's always bigger opportunities, you know, and I, I never want to stop someone from achieving uh, different goals. And so I, I commend her. We're going to miss her. We're going to really miss her. Uh, but she's going to do great things there. Yeah. County Executive. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Thank for you. your time. Yes. I know you're busy. Thank you. Just before this uh, uh, taping, she was in the boardroom, a meeting, and she's probably going to go back in there. And that's the life and times of uh, Jennifer Bertino Tarrant. And I'm Richard Fredrickson, and you've been watching Profiles. See you next time.